סולסטיס קויל שלום. היי, היי. And welcome to Culture Buzz. Actually, welcome back from a tour, from your Indian tour. Before we go into the details, can somebody please explain the meaning of your wonderful name? <laughs> you the, the meaning? We have a story behind the meaning. Uh, <laughs> initially, back in 2001, we were called Solstice. And uh, then after a while we discovered that there were like 20 other bands called Solstice, if you can, uh, if you can believe that. So uh, we, we, de- we decided we needed to change the name, but we, didn't w- we already had a name. Uh, we, we built a name for ourselves as a performing uh, band. Reputation, and you already had a reputation. More importantly, we had a website. Yeah. <laughs> we had our own domain. <laughs> and the website was solstice.co.il. So it was a joke, we said, oh, hmm. Perfect. Maybe we could just add COIL, COIL, to our name. Hey, this is brilliant, that, guys. That's how it came to be. That's how it came to be. Solstice okay. COIL. Yeah, and about two years later, Delicious did the same thing. <laughs> there, there was a website, Delicious, deli.whatever.us. And, uh, we and were pioneers. We, were, we did it first. So But you forgot to register the patent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, since 2001 makes you one decade old or young. Because when, you, when one listens to your music, you are definitely young and kicking. Let's talk a bit about your road, your path. since 2001. Okay, 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 I'll, okay, I'll, okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, we met. Uh, at first it was uh, me and Ofer, and uh, Shai came along uh, like a year after. We played with a, with a drum and a bassist. We started uh, playing uh, covers, Radiohead covers, which, uh, which was how we built our reputation because we had some very successful shows as a Radiohead cover band and we also had uh, the original materials that we wrote in the beginning of the, of the road that was when I was 19 and Ofer was 16 so after we finished the, the Radiohead uh, tour we dumped all of that and started, writing, started working on new stuff and from the beginning it was only English? no, in, in, in the start we had a few songs in Hebrew Uh, which we were, were yeah. horrible, yeah, horrible songs. We were songs. feeling our way around and uh, we ended up deciding that English works best for what we're trying to do and what we're trying to uh, convey across. So it works better in English than in Hebrew. Mm-hmm. Because in the beginning we didn't, we didn't even have a, a style. We, our, our genre was like alternative Britpop metal grunge or something. <laughs> and uh, then we... We s- decided to focus on, uh, on, alter- on progressive rock and alternative rock and uh, the combination of the two, which, uh, which isn't very common. There are a few bands that do that, but it's not something that, uh, that's very common. Which makes you unique. Well, I think so. Actually, today not so much, but back... Back then, back then. Ten, ten years ago, we were one of the first bands, I think. We can describe, world, you, as the, we can describe you as the pioneers. Yeah. We invented the genre. Yeah, <laughs> we, you can describe us as the pioneers. I'm not sure that it would be actually accurate. accurate <laughs> but, you know, um, we are pioneers, but nobody followed us. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the real, the real um, several bands that did that um, at the same time that we uh, did our thing, um, some of them became... more famous worldwide, mainly because they were based in um, England or okay. the United States and not in Israel, which allowed them to grow, you know, um, gain more... Uh, unfair, yeah. unfair. Yeah. It's um, an unfair world. <laughs> so, um, around uh, 2003, uh, we did that uh, Radiohead cover tour and we started polishing our own uh, new material, which was in English and was uh, more of uh, an alternative slash progressive style. Um, we started actually uh, playing some new songs, some original songs in the uh, later Ready Heard cover shows. Um, and then when we had like four or five original songs, we decided um, to end the Ready Heard cover tour and start um, performing with our own uh, material. Um, 
January 2004, first show. Yeah. First original uh, hey. material show. In the, Good memory. At the Rimon, uh, Rimon School of Music. Mm -hmm. We had a... Uh, I went there for two months and then I quit. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, we went uh, to perform after I quit the school. Uh, but it was very nice. And uh, we've been uh, doing it since, ever since. Uh, in 2005... We released uh, the first album, A Prescription for Paper Cuts, in uh, September 2005. Uh, we, uh, we started... A beautiful uh, album, if I may uh, say so myself. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, that, that album got uh, a lot of reviews and... Uh, attention. Attention, uh, uh, mostly abroad, uh, in Europe, uh, in the US, in Indonesia, yeah. and uh, Uzbekistan. We have a review in... Uh, There's a progressive rock site uh, from Uzbekistan. Wow. He wrote a review wow. of the album. And uh, then we had a review in a uh, uh, Belgian magazine in French that sent to like, uh, he said, like 40 states that speak French. It's out of 40 states that speak yeah. French. So, so yeah, he said it's like a worldwide dis distribution. And this like, paved the way to your tour in Belgium. Yes. Yeah. There, the, the festival we played in Belgium was actually one that the, the magazine, magazine. organized. Yeah. The, it's called Pro Resistor. Mm -hmm. and, uh, they really liked the material. They did an interview. They did a uh, review of the album. And then uh, they, they invited us to Belgium in mm -hmm. 2006, mm -hmm. which uh, was our first uh, c concert abroad. Two. Yes. Uh, and how often do you find yourself performing here in Israel compared to... performances abroad that, when, that, when, when you compare that really depends on on the um, period depends period yeah we had we had after we released uh, paper cuts we had an extensive tour um, which led eventually to the um, Belgian tour uh, but after we came back from Belgium we went on a short hiatus and we um, changed some members of the band uh, actually both the The bass player and the drummer uh, left the band. Uh, the drummer just uh, started to focus on his family. And How dare he! Couldn't, <laughs> couldn't uh, really uh, pay as much attention to the band yeah. as we wanted him to. He uh, changed his priorities. Yeah. Um, and um, during that period, I think from 2006 to 2008? 7 till 9. Yeah, well, like a period of 18 months or so, we stopped playing altogether and focused no. on, on writing uh, new... 2009 till... 1709 we played a lot. We, we had a period where we didn't perform, we focused on writing new stuff, mm -hmm. um, mostly on the computer. You took some time off. Yeah, we took some time off stage, but we, we started to polish... and build stuff, material for the new album. Most of the songs, or some of the songs, were uh, already in existence uh, before that. Uh, we performed three or four of them in Belgium. And then, when we came back, we, we started uh, recording them into the computer and working on the computer, um, as opposed to working in, uh, yeah. in the studio. Uh, when we eventually uh, went back on stage, we had uh, very polished material which can be heard uh, in uh, Natural Causes, which, is, which was released in uh, 2011. Yeah. Your second album? Second yeah. Album. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a bit about your Indian tour. How was it? Well, it was amazing. It was simply a brilliant experience. Um, we came into it not knowing exactly what to expect, and It was really one in a lifetime opportunity and experience, and uh, the, we're very, we're still <laughs> not over it. Uh. The audience was very surprising. Uh, we didn't know exactly what to expect, as you said, of the country itself, because we know about India, but we never, none of us have ever been, the five of us, because those two more members are so not here, uh, we've never been there. And we knew, okay, it's India, but then we came, okay, it's India. <laughs> and, uh, and then we did the show, and there were like a lot of people, and they were 
very excited, very enthusiastic, and the, the kind of enthusiasm we're not used to, because usually in our shows people uh, tend to sit and listen and concentrate, because the music is complex. And these guys didn't care. They liked it when we when we played uh, when when we rocked. So they they liked it very much, and uh, it, they gave us so much uh, love and enthusiasm. Uh -huh. it, was, uh, it was really amazing. It was there was, was this feedback between the crowd and and what we had on stage that just was really new to us. They they really gave our hearts, which caused us to give our, give our own heart during the shows. And this is something that we uh, experienced that we rarely had before. Um, so we can safely say that the best audience you had is the Indian one? So far. I, yeah. either, either the Indian one or the Belgian one. The Belgian, the Belgian uh, guys were also were pretty welcome. cool. Uh, they were like, you know, uh, 30, 40 year old programmers or something. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we, we played uh, in Belgium. Our, uh, our big concert in Belgium in the Progressiste Festival was in front of 300 computer uh, engineers. Geeks, <laughs> computer geeks. <laughs> no, computer engineers. <laughs> we had 300 programmers <laughs> in one room. Uh, the, the crowd in India was uh, younger, uh, uh, generally. And um, what was interesting is that they all, they, they, they behaved in the same manner all across, whether we played in Delhi or Kanpur or uh, in Jindal University, they were really, uh, they were really into it. And the end of, uh, of the Jindal show, they just burst onto the stage <laughs> to just come and, I don't know, take pictures with us. It took, us it took us 30 minutes to get off the stage because every <laughs> single member of the audience wanted a picture with every single member of the band. And, and in uh, they are Delhi... They are absolutely right. Yeah, and in Delhi, uh, two guys went uh, behind the security guys to just come and... Head during the show. During the during show, the show yeah. they jumped on stage and started going, yeah, started yeah. headbanging. Yeah. Ah, okay. And, and, so. and that was in, in, in the big festival, in, in NH7, which, which had like real security, with real security guards, and, and, and a fence in front of the stage. And it, it didn't stop them? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you'll be going back there. Hopefully. With fans like that? Yeah. If there's another chance to go, we'll definitely go. Which leads me to the following question. Uh, when you look on the global map of your favorite destinations as a, as a band, what are your priorities? Where would you like to go next? Wherever, wherever we can. I think um, no favorites. Is, no favorites. There is there is a large following in the uh, in the UK. There is a large following in the States. Um, I think you could reach a lot of people. Our music is in English, so I gather it, it would uh, it could reach a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. But um, rock and progressive rock in general is a very global thing. So I assume. Uh, we could have uh, we could reach people whenever we go, whether it's I don't know Scandinavia or even Africa or whatever. I'm mm -hmm. sure we could. Uh, the, the thing with um, our um, genre of music is that um, people who listen to this music, especially young people, uh, are, they, they they really want uh, bands from abroad to come and and play for them. Uh, as a young boy, I remember myself. Uh, wanting to have international artists come to Israel and no one came and I actually found myself going abroad to see concerts uh, of my favorite bands which uh, could have been avoided if they came to Israel so if we could bring our music to anywhere in the world you know Canada, Iceland, Poland, Antarctica. India again, <laughs> Thailand I, I don't really care as long as there is willing audience and there's the um, logistic support, we can we can go there. Mm -hmm. it's, it's and we want to go there. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't really expect uh, there to be so many people who like hard rock in India. That was the real surprise. We didn't know that how much they're, they're thirsty for that. So I, I would say any place like India, because the the US has has millions of bands of rock band, rock and metal bands, but uh, 
uh, places uh, that are more far away, like the like Far East or South Africa or, or Africa or wherever, mm -hmm. where there's less of that going on, then we'd love to go there and see the audience. If if there's a, if they're as great as they were in uh, in India, I would love to. Be. Mm -hmm. Uh, do Facebook and YouTube and all the other uh, new media outlets make it easier for uh, musicians today? Uh, yes, and to yes, and yes and no. Uh, it makes it easier because it's, it's much easier to reach people from all around the world. It makes it hard because now everyone can do that. And we... Uh, the, the competition is... Yes. Serious. We've been very, uh, very tech-savvy from, from the beginning. We we have a very uh, we're, we're very, very we have a website that's very, we we invest a lot in a website. Offer and Shai uh, develop the website. Yeah. And, uh, Offer designs it, yeah. and uh, we've had a uh, an impressive website since two thousand two. We had a website, and then it was redesigned. Uh, we've worked on forums when they. Uh, that when was the thing when that was the thing, yeah. we, we've been to MySpace, uh, then yeah. we moved to Facebook, uh, yeah. YouTube, I think, brought us the biggest success, uh, our biggest online success because of the Dream Theater parody, which, uh, which had uh, tens of thousands of uh, yeah. views, and yeah. that, that, that really got us exposure. Some of the people in India told us that we loved your Dream Theater parody. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Guys, what can we wish you? For the future, more shows. Uh, <laughs> we want to reach more people around the world. We want to play wherever we can. We want to get our music across, our messages across. We want to take over the world. <laughs> <laughs> world domination. Yeah, a few this more albums. I think yeah. record some more. Songs. So sounds yeah. good to me. Yeah, yeah. We we are actually working on our uh, third album. Hey, uh, as we speak. Exciting. Yeah, we have. All when can when can we expect him? It. Um, 2013, I yeah. think it's a fair estimation. Yeah, we're, we're almost done with pre-production, which means that um, spring, I think, is, is going to be when we start recording the actual uh, tracks. It's being recorded in Israel? Uh, yeah, we, we record in Israel, uh, we mix in Israel, actually, we are the, we, it, the, the album is self-produced. Uh, but we record in, in Bardo Studio, which is our favorite um, uh, recording studio. In Tel Aviv? In Ramat Gan. Ramat Gan. Yeah. Ramat Gan, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, where, that's, that's actually my, my choice for drum recordings. Um, most of the other stuff we do at home for budget reasons. Um, and you know, because, because the technology allows it. Yeah. It sounds good. Uh, it's not... Uh, it's yeah. not a compromise, really. I, I'm guessing that you, are, you will not compromise when it comes to your music. Yeah, music and sound. And sound. Yeah. You can't record drums at home. Though, yeah. So. Okay, guys. We wish you all that you wish yourself. And more than that. Tadarava. Good luck much. and shalom.